In this video, I'm going to talk about how to save on your electricity bill. And in some cases, cut it in half. Welcome to my channel where I talk about all things solar power, solar energy, and storage for business owners and homeowners alike. My name is Jamie Green, the Solar Queen, and I want to say thank you for watching today's video. It's kind of an important one because so many Americans are facing money issues because of the cost of inflation. So one of the ways that you can hedge yourself or protect yourself from rising costs of living, one of them being your electricity bill, is by going solar. I love helping businesses and homeowners learn about solar power and save on their energy costs. And literally, solar power does it. Solar saves, saves so much money for homeowners and business owners. And I'm going to talk about the three ways that the utility companies charge you for your electricity. And most people, most businesses have no clue how they're being charged for their energy. And it's three ways plus one. The, one, the plus one is gas. I can't do anything about gas unless you decide to switch gas appliances over to electric, which I've actually had a lot of homeowners do. They go and they change out all their, because they have to change over their appliances anyways, or maybe they need to be replaced, and so they're changing it over to electricity. And if they do that, then they really truly will be able to take advantage, the full advantage of solar power and solar energy for their homes. So can't do anything about gas unless you switch the appliances over to electric, but I can do something about your electricity bill. And if you're a business owner uh, or if you live in states where they implement demand charges because they kind of recognize you as a high energy user, there are ways to eliminate those demand charges as well. So the three ways, and let me know in the comments below if you knew how the utility companies charge you for your electricity, but the three ways, that they're charging you is for generation, transmission, and distribution. So generation is when you need electricity, they're gonna um, fire up the power plants and they're gonna generate energy for you, electricity through different ways that they do it that's using fossil fuels. And they're going to then distribute it to your house or to your business through the transmission lines. So transmission, distribution, and generation charges go away when you get solar power. The only thing that you're gonna pay to the utility company is a minimum delivery charge. So if you're a business owner or a homeowner in California and you have solar, you will see on your energy statement something called a minimum delivery charge, or we call it connection fee, just to make it simple and easy to understand. So you pay $9.98. And when, if you watch this video here about me protesting uh, NEM 3.0, part of that NEM 3.0 package that the utility companies want to get the CPUC to pass is instead of having a minimum delivery charge, they're wanting to start charging a grid access fee, which would be right now they're proposing $8 per kilowatt. So a depending on how big your solar system is, say you have a five kilowatt system and they want you to pay a grid access fee as a solar customer, they're seeking out $40 a month just for being, to have grid access, to be able to send your, your excess energy to the grid and to so they can then distribute it and transmit it to your neighbors and still also charge you a minimum delivery fee. So. That's why I was at that rally. But when you go solar and you either pay cash or you finance it, if you're a business owner or if you're a homeowner, you essentially eliminate these three charges, the generation, transmission, and distribution, because you're getting solar panels put on your rooftop. And so you kind of now have a power plant, a mini power plant that's clean, renewable energy, and it's sustainable. And you're going to generate your energy on on your rooftop or on a carport or in a on a ground mount or a tracker if you are a business owner and that energy that's generated by the sun it doesn't have very far to go because you're going to have what is conduit that's you're going to be your transmission and then your so your main panel is going to distribute the energy throughout your business or your home so you eliminate 
really those three charges from the utility company and you do it all within your property, thereby eliminating your electricity bill. So I can eliminate the electricity charges from your utility bill. I can't do anything about gas, but oftentimes people will and businesses will finance or lease their solar system. For homeowners, if you can avoid leasing, I would avoid it. One, because you can't take the tax credit. Um, and even businesses that do lease their systems, you, you technically don't get to take the tax credit either. The, the lessor is going to take the tax credit and businesses are a little bit different than home systems just because the homeowners typically are gonna outright own and buy the solar system. And same with businesses can do the same thing. When you finance the solar system, instead of paying these um, utility bills that fluctuate in cost, or continue to rise in rates because rates continue to increase along with inflation that we're all feeling right now, especially at the grocery store and at the gas pump and with our utility bills. This is one way that you can reduce, eliminate and hedge yourself from future rate increases from the utility company by going solar. So that's really what I wanted to discuss on today's video about how you can cut your costs with your energy and when you go solar and you finance the solar system, you can do it for nothing out of pocket. So, you know, you might see um, if you Google, like how do I get solar or how do I pay for solar or how does solar work? And you see all these pop-up ads and it says no cost solar, or free solar, or free la la la. It's not free. The energy is free because it's coming from the sun, but you have to pay for that equipment. And when you finance it, there's nothing required out of pocket as long as you qualify for financing for business owners and for homeowners. When you, you typically, when you finance it, there's nothing out of pocket. So there's, you can start cash flowing if you're a business owner, cash flowing from day one. If you're a homeowner, you are going to make your solar payments. And then hopefully there's a gap between what you used to pay the utility company and what you're paying currently you know, for uh, your solar system. So that gap right there is your savings. And hopefully it's at least 20%, hopefully 30, 40, 50, 60% for people who go solar. That's the kind of stuff I'm seeing when I'm helping homeowners go solar. And for businesses, it's phenomenal. So if you're interested in solar, I want you to reach out to me for your home or for your business. And I wanted to show you quickly breaking down our solar system in the month of December. So this is our running NEM um, charges year to date. And this is for a December bill. I just printed off. We owe $200 to the, for gas and $10 connection fee or a mandated delivery fee. And we also owe a little bit of non-bypassable charges, which no one can escape. Everyone has to pay those. And they're little tiny line items on, on your utility bill that everyone has to pay. So we have right here, we're at a net, I don't know if you can see that, we're at a net credit. So our solar system generated more energy in the summer and it's carrying, it's doing it exactly what it was supposed to do. It's carrying us through the winter. And here's a graph chart. So you can see it kind of, Here's where we started off. We had a lot of net energy metering credits and now we're here and we're, it, we're right there on how much credit we have left. This line represents net zero. The goal with solar is to net zero or to come out a little bit ahead. We'll probably come out with owing the utility company a little bit of money. But this is um, in the month of December, we used 184 kilowatt hours and our solar system gener and i'm looking down at my phone because i'm going to open up my solar uh my solar production app in the month of december we generated 118 kilowatt hours so we still offset a third of our energy costs with solar and the rest we got from uh, the grid, but we have been building up credits. So we still, even with pulling from the grid, we're still coming out with a net credit as of today. <laughs> uh, we have three more months until we true up, which means we settle with the utility company. And when we, when I go and design a solar system for your business or for your home, the goal is to offset 
all of your kilowatt hour usage on an annual basis. And if you're a business owner or if you live in a state where they, they have demand charges because you're using so much energy all at one time, they can't possibly know how much electricity someone's gonna use or a business is gonna use at any given time. And if it's, if it's the demand is so great, they're gonna slap on a demand charge based on how many kilowatts of energy you're demanding um, for your business or for your home. So they're gonna charge you for that. And sometimes for some businesses, the demand charges are more expensive than the transmission distribution um, and transmission distribution and typical generation charges. So they slap on this demand charge and the only way to truly offset that, especially if you have a business, is with batteries and with storage. And we can supply that for you if that is something that you are suffering from and you want to get rid of. So reach out to me if you're interested in solar for your home or your business. And if you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to hear more about solar energy and solar power, sustainable living with uh, green renewable energy, make sure to subscribe to my channel and set that notification bell to all so you know when a new video comes out. I'm also gonna be uploading some videos of energy savings, five ways that you can save on your energy costs as a homeowner. It doesn't really apply so much to businesses, but you can take the principles and apply it. And I'm also going to be uploading a series called What to Expect When Going Solar. So you can go through and binge watch these videos that I've created for you to understand exactly the entire going solar process. It's geared towards homeowners, but it can also apply to business owners. The only difference really is, is that businesses just use more energy and they pay a lot more for their electricity. Therefore, that's why I'm here to help you save on your energy costs and take all that money that you've worked hard for and instead of throwing it to the utility company, you invest it back into your home or into your business. So thanks so much for watching this video. Leave a comment or a question down below with whatever you might have about how to save on your energy bills or even let me know how you are saving and cutting on your energy costs because I think viewers would appreciate knowing how you're doing that. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great week. Bye-bye.